Hello everyone, Pally Tub here, and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. We are still continuing our deep dive for Samro. In the past, we have shown off some auto attack focus builds, as well as a wind walk focus build. But for Samro today, we are focusing on the Illusion Master. For those of you that have not watched my videos in maybe a few years and you're just coming back, Illusion Master used to be the only way to play. It allowed you to get away with everything. Also, back then, Blade Storm's cooldown was significantly longer, so you couldn't really use this to, like, split-push lanes like you can now. Illusion Master has a very big learning curve, and in a lot of situations, significantly less of a payoff. But I tried to do my best today to make it work. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want to check out any more of our deep dives, you can find those down in the video description. But without any further ado, let's jump into today's game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Dragon Shire map today. I'm not looking forward to playing this build, which feels weird to say, because Illusion Master used to be, I think, e without even thinking about it, top three abilities in the game. I used to think this was so cool, and it's just been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. And it's at the point now that I think you are... This is a little hyperbole, okay? But I think you're actively hurting your team if you're not taking Bladestorm. That's what it feels like to me, anyway. So we do have the B team on the other side, which means I am going to be focused until the ends of the Earth. I'm sure this is going to be fun. Uh, friendly team today is Samuro, Falstad, Murden, Lee Ming, and Brightwing. The enemy team, Greymane, Artanas, Sylvanas, Lucio, and Johanna. We're going to head up to the top lane right away and try to start soaking. Although it looks like the friendly team has lost the trade in the middle lane. Uh, I'm just going to try to push this into the towers. I don't know where everyone from middle just went. Looks like Artanis is on me and he wins that trade. So we're going to let Artanis just have that lane for a moment. I uh, was thinking about rotating away to help Brightwing, but we are simply too far and there's another way of coming in too soon. I'll try to sneak in a few hits when he doesn't have shields, but he's going to have shields pretty much all the time. Take control of the Did they see it? Oh my god. <laughs> I wasn't sure if they saw the swap there or not. Oh my god. Art is stacking. Okay, someone else needs top lane. If he's doing the stacking quest, I am literally going to give him heroes to fight the entire game. That is a recipe for disaster. We are moving away immediately. I'll go ahead and take the bottom lane. In fact, I'll go ahead and take this camp. I can swap to the clone in the back, so I won't be hit by anything. Falstad is channeling the objective really, really early, which is good. But Greymane's on the way. The entire fucking team is on the way. Johanna has noticed that we're on a camp. Let's see how this plays out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was the biggest B-team play I've ever seen. <laughs> Let's see if we can get on this objective and stop the fast cap. I don't know if we can, but I'm going to try. No, no, no. Sylvanas moved on to it. I don't know. I might out-trade Sylv here. Imagine what I could do if I picked another talent. So I was thinking about taking Mirage... So, man, because we're going to be generating a lot of clones, I thought that might be fun to move the clones around. But to be totally honest, I feel like since they removed the teleport heal off of Samuro, that we fundamentally need our level one... Oh, I thought he charged. We need our level one, level four talents to kind of be cemented in because it's really the only way that I feel like I can get sustained. Uh, I hope that doesn't feel like a cop-out. I just don't feel like Samuro really has much build diversity at all because of the changes they've made to air quote bugs that have, were features for years. Uh, and that doesn't mean they can't be bugs. I'm not just trying to shit talk. I'm just saying I've really had to adjust my play style quite a lot with every type of build that we're going for with Samuro. Uh, looks like the dragon is still continuing its push. The friendly team is, I don't know, slightly behind the enemy in XP. So I'm going to try to grab this lane before we rotate away. Looks like Sylvanas is down in the bottom lane. Uh, ooh, Greymane just hopping right in. Look at that. The swap from Artanis as well, making his life a little more difficult. Woo. Um, we could stay in, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> 
Oh, I don't have a swap. I'm so fucking dead. <laughs> I'm so fucking dead, dude. Oh, uh, we will take Burning Blade at level seven, and I think this is pretty important. Samro's main play style right now is to use Blade Storm to clear waves very, very quickly. If you're taking Blade Storm, I think it's totally fine to take a different level seven. However, we're gonna need that cleave to have some AOE damage. So how this works is me and my mirror images, basically whenever we get this sword filled by either pressing W or by attacking, it's gonna make it so uh, we cleave a little bit of damage off to the sides as well. So it does allow us to kind of take camps, although it might be a little too early for this one. Let's swap in to get that health back. That will help out a lot. But that's kind of the idea. And this is also how we're gonna mostly clear lanes with this setup too, just kind of walk in and deal the damage. We do have a big power spike coming up at level 10, but the way we have to play around our clones, if this, I don't know, it's not guaranteed that we're gonna do well with it, I suppose. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my critical strike, rotate in and try to do some damage to this Artanas. Hey, that's not bad. We can keep it up just by teleporting. Oh, the Lucio save, bro. Bro, the Lucio save. Objective's coming up in uh, four short seconds. So I'm gonna stand on the point. If we stand still while in stealth, we do get true invisibility. Although our invisibility isn't that long. So this isn't something you're gonna be using a ton, but you can hide from some stuff with it. Lucio's the only one still here and it looks like the friendly team is taking bottom right now. Falstad, isn't Falstad dead? Goes for the immediate capture of the dragon and he gets it just as the enemy Sylvanas was showing up. That's beautiful. I'm gonna clear this wave and we're gonna start to take Illusion Master. So just like every other human, I have my biases. I try to set them aside and talk objectively about things. But unfortunately, I'm old enough to remember what old Illusion Master looked like for Samuro. And unfortunately, I mained this character when Illusion Master was really, really good. So you'll notice my bar here. We haven't had this on Samro before. I can control my little dudes as much as I want. I can give them targets to attack. I can give them places to move to. Every time we make clones, I can also hearth one. I could mount one up. All of our normal key inputs still work for all of these clones. However, the duration that the clones exist has been like neutered into non-existence for me. Like, I don't understand the point of this ability at all anymore. And I think it is mostly for mind games. Like for instance, um, when you press Q, usually Samro is the only target that moves outside of this like predetermined path, right? Let me go ahead and turn my critical strike on. We'll come up behind these guys. So you can do some jukes by making clones and then specifically moving clone number two here to draw attention and then swapping to it. Does that make sense? Because if I don't do any key inputs on my real Samro, real Samro looks like he's just a fucking bot going off on his business and attacking stuff like normal. But I can make enemies think that, hey, this clone number two right here, he's the real one, you should attack him. And then, Theoretically, I could swap to it and make that clone the real one, but you get what I'm saying. It's a lot of mind games in the first place. Bladestorm does really good damage too. So you're giving away the really good lane clear of Bladestorm just to be able to move your clones around a little bit more. The main strategy for Illusion Master Samuro used to be split soaking. And I don't mean like, oh yeah, I'm just clearing middle lane and then look at me, I'm up in top lane really fast. I mean, you would immediately make a clone, mount this guy up, he would travel over here, you're in lane cleaving it down, and then you swap to the mount so you're back in middle lane. But do you see how tight that timer is now? I couldn't even reach the next lane. Couldn't even do that. There were situations on Samuro in the past, and I do agree that it was impressive. I'm not trying to say it wasn't impressive, but there were situations with Samuro in the past where I won games because I was pushing top lane, and then I was able to run down to bottom lane with a clone and swap there as well. Like a ridiculous amount of map control. Artanis is moving on the objective. Does he know which one's the real me? No, I don't think so. And we'll just continue to push here. Friendly team did grab that dragon as fast as humanly possible. That's ridiculous. When he comes in with the swap, we'll just go ahead and swap as well. And then dip out. 
<laughs> I swapped to it, and I think he panicked. <laughs> he fucking wins that trade, though. Don't don't let Artanis bait me, dude. He wins that trade all day. We'll just keep two in lane and keep pushing. And then when it's about to fade, we'll swap back. That way I could sit back and heal while that was going on, at least. We were getting at least some regen. Friendly team's dragon has gone down, but the push towards middle continues. Let's keep up our damage here if we can. Three get back, my dude. Thank you. Another common thing that you would do in lane is immediately, every time you make clones, uh, if you were in lane and uh, trying to trade with someone, what I would do a lot is walk one clone back. Oh, this is for the exact reason. <laughs> Wow, what a great example! Oh my god! <laughs> because that always gives you such an easy out. It's such an easy out. Literally no one can keep up with you. Wow, that was perfect. Thank you, BG. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and stealth. We'll swap out two down here. See, they think two's the real one. Two's not the real one. Two's the real one now. three to go this way. Swap to three. Region globe. Clones. Clones on healer. The shrines awaken once more. Who I was debating going back in on that. <laughs> uh, we're going to take harsh winds. This is just going to actually, I don't know. Do we have any slows? We kind of do. We could always critically hit. That sounds good. I'm going to go for harsh winds. Attacking hero during wind walk increases the damage that they take for the next three seconds. Again, just very, very straightforward. For our 13, I did not get Sakuchi. I got the other wind walk talent that makes this clone every time I teleport. I thought we could do some fun juki stuff with that, with uh, the ability to micro each of our clones. I thought that'd be fun. Uh, the push here is still going well. Let me move three over. We'll take over this top building. Top objective. Bottom has been taken by the enemy team, so it doesn't look like we're getting a fast cap here. However, they're not paying attention to top. So let me try to kill top. Swap when the tower focuses me. There is a very big push happening here. Uh, but if they're not paying attention to their lanes, then I don't care. I think we stay. Yeah, we push this all the way to core. They turn around on me, great. We'll just try to juke around. This one must Looks like Artanis might be coming back. Not too quickly though. Okay, next clone. fine dude we're fine they are going for a fast cap right now though so we'll try to be here in middle Li Ming's taking bottom I do like that they get duration if they're attacking someone I do like that that's pretty cool <laughs> oh, I killed Brightwing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh... Okay, I'm on Sylph. Great damage. Johanna down. We're going to focus the Grey Main. And then I'm going to go immediately up to top lane while healing with our E. And try to cap this. We could swap out if we need. I don't think we need to. Okay. And then my push continues up top. Let's make every clone we can. Try to cleave as much AoE out as we can. And keep the aggression up. That dragon should not go top. Top's the worst lane to push with dragon. 
that that bridge there is called the Bridge of Death. <laughs> On both sides. I highly recommend never taking a tour towards the Bridge of Death. Three blade style images have increased health and duration. Now we're getting back towards old Samuro here a little bit, back in the right direction. Um, you want to pay attention to me? Not yet. Let's start thinking about leaving. Look at the duration on this clone, bro. I can go anywhere I want. And we're up. We're gonna mount up and head back in. Uh, I might actually clear bottom right now. I think I'm okay. <laughs> yes! Yes! On Sills, swapping back, swapping back, swapping back. Please swap, thank you. That swap scared me. It didn't look like it was working. I also missed my bonus damage from stealth there. I'm kind of pissed. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Which clone do I have there? We jumped a team. And now we push. I do like the extra duration. That is fun. Uh, 15 seconds on this. Should have it, to be honest. We send three away. Mount up. I wish I was mounted. If I swapped to a mounted hero. Is that too much to ask? That probably is. That's probably too much to ask. Yeah, that's probably too much. Yeah, let's not do that. Yeah, don't take any recommendations from me with this character. I just prefer him when he's the most fucking busted as possible. Okay, we march forward with two and three while we're capturing this. Two and three become our teleports. Teleport now. now it burns. Greymane's coming up to me. Uh, so I'm just going to make a new clone and walk that clone in. And I'm going to micro the shit out of it. Swapping in. More clones. Run three out. I don't need to run three out. They're all bottom. I'll take the building. Thank you. Uh, we did pick up three kills on the enemy team here, too. Let me push in the minions of mid. Then we get catapults on core from two lanes. And we have a dragon moving down bottom. Just swap so I don't get targeted. He doesn't know it's real. And if I don't react, he'll assume it's a clone. You see that? So I suppose with giving up Bladestorm, you're just improving your ability to do mind games and to be as slippery as possible. Is it worth it? I don't think so. No, I think I would prefer the Bladestorm. Getting XP instantaneously is so good. It is so good. Being able to babysit two lanes so your team can push one as a group is so good. And while I do feel like I can be in a lot of different places on the map, I definitely feel the big decrease in my combat effectiveness, but a big increase in my trickery. So the talents we, we went for in today's video are Way of the Wind, One with the Wind. Notice this is the same as basically every other setup we've done. I feel like with the removal of the teleport heal, you basically have to have this sustain. And it does help out a lot when you're rotating in between lanes.
Burning Blade, I wanted to cleave because I didn't have one at 10. Illusion Master at 10, then leaves into Karibi. This is the one, I don't think I said that right. This is the one that makes a clone every time you teleport. I've never played with this talent until we started doing the deep dive, but I did feel like it would be great for this particular setup because you already get a ton of misdirection with this talent on its own. And it becomes even more fun when you can then move that clone around. Harsh Winds, because I was going into Stealth a lot and wanted the damage, three blade style increases their health and their duration um, to 16 seconds. God, it's only eight seconds by default. I literally think 16 seconds used to be the level 10. I might be lying, but that's what it feels like. This build is so much weaker than it used to be. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>